بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا في يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد ورسوله اما بعد اتممنا ولله الحمد والشكر والحمد ما يتعلق بالاصل الاول من الاصول الثلاث اليوم ان شاء الله تعالى نبدا بالاصل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد بعد الفيجي the blessing of Allah yesterday we finished the first principle from the three principles of Usul الثلاثة so today we start with the second principle ما هو الأصل الثاني من أصول الثلاثة so what is the second principle from the three principles من يعرف who knows أصل الثاني من أصول الثلاثة ما هي الأصول الثلاثة He's asking what are the three principles in the summary what? In the summary yeah, you mentioned yesterday. And they are first question. So this is the lesson today. Madi, what's your religion? So the author said that the second principle is knowing the religion with its evidences. <coughs> what is Al-Islam? If a person comes to you, a Muslim or a non-Muslim, and he says to you, are you a Muslim, what will you say? Yes. Okay. okay, and then if he said to you that now explain to me this Islam that you're claiming for yourself. If you think that you're a Muslim, then explain to me what you mean by Islam. Because if you know Islam, then you become a Muslim. But if you don't know Al Islam or the meaning of Islam, then the fact that you're calling yourself a Muslim is a false statement. It's a lie. It's jihad al Now, So, what is Al Islam? Who can tell? Who can tell us what is the meaning of Al Islam? So the rest of you don't know the meaning of Islam. The one who doesn't know Islam or the meaning of Islam, what do we say about it? So, the disbeliever, do you call him to Islam or not? So if he says to you, okay, what is Islam? Explain to me the meaning of Islam. How do I become a Muslim? So who knows? So the rest of you don't know the meaning of Islam. This is a problem, brothers. How is it that we don't know the meaning of Islam? If the Muslim doesn't know the meaning of Islam, then who's going to know the meaning of Islam? A disbeliever? He said, brothers, this is a problem. He said, these lessons that we're studying, they're about those things that should be known about religion by necessity. By default, you should know these things. You should, there shouldn't be a time when you don't know these things. They should be known by default. Automatically, automatically you know these things. Al-Islam so he said that Al Islam, this term Islam, is being defined as being Al Istislam that you submit yourself to Allah by Al Tawheed. Meaning, meaning you pray to Allah, you're obedient to Allah. You're not disobedient to him. Al Istislam al Allah bi Tawheed. Al Tawheed al Khadr. Who is Allah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Bi Mahtasu bihi min al Rububiya wal Muluhiya wal Asma wa Sifat. Tufrid Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Banu al Tawheed al Thalath wa Allah Shirk. Naam. And the Sheikh explained the meaning of Al Tawheed, and we've gone through it previously. The you know the three categories. 
and also the Sheikh said al istislam lillah bi tawhid wal intiyad lahu bi ta'a and also submitting yourself again to Allah in obedience and also staying away from ashirk and the people of Sheikh this is the meaning of al islam these two things al istislam al islam wal istislam lillah bi tawhid wal intiyad lahu bi ta'a la bud min amal wa dhadd al ta'a al ma'siyah so when we say that islam it means al istislam lillah bi tawhid submitting yourself to Allah with by a tawheed and we also say al intiyad lahu bi ta'a it is submitting yourself or directing yourself towards his obedience this therefore shows that islam is actions and the opposite of obedience is disobedience wal bara'a min ash-shirk wa ahli and then finally al bara'a min ash-shirk wa ahli i disassociating yourself or freeing yourself from the shirk from shirk and the people of shirk تقدم معنا بالأمس أن البراءة من الشرك يعني تكون بالقلب واللسان والجوارح. And we already said yesterday that freeing yourself from shirk and the people of shirk is done in three ways: in your heart, upon your tongue, and upon your limbs. نعم. من يعيد لي هذا التعريف تعريف الإسلام؟ Okay, so who can now repeat this definition, the definition of the Islam that the Sheikh just mentioned? ما شاء الله. نعم. الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد والانكار له بالطاعة والبراءة من الشرك وأهله. so like the brother said, الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد submitting yourself to Allah والانكار له بالطاعة and then submitting or directing yourself to Allah in obedience and finally freeing yourself from the shirk and the people of shirk. طيب ما هي مراتب الدين؟ so what are the different levels of the religion؟ ما هي مراتب الدين؟ نعم. كم هي أولا؟ How many? How many levels? ثلاثة. ثلاثة. مراتب الدين ثلاثة. لازم تعرف هذه. هذا معلومة يتم بالضرورة. Again, these things should be known by necessity by default. الأول. الإسلام. الإسلام. نعم. So the first level is الإسلام. الثاني. The second level is Al Iman, and the level of Al Iman is higher than the level of Al Islam. And then the third level is Al Ihsan, which is higher. Another time, what are the different levels of the religion? Al Islam, Al Ibada, Al Ihsan. Al Islam, Al Iman, Al Ihsan. Al Islam, Al Iman, Al Ihsan. Al Islam, Al Iman, Al Ihsan. What are or how many are the pillars of Islam? How many pillars does Islam have? Okay, man. The rest of you don't know? The pillars of Islam? Five pillars of Islam. What are the five pillars of Islam? The rest of you don't know the five pillars of Islam? Nah. Hey. Um. You um. You wash for Malamu. Malamu is best. Um. Hajj, pray, fast, zakat. Now, al awal, the first pillar. Shahadah, you pray. You said only one God. Worship only one God. Shahadah, Allah, ilaha illallah, Allah, Muhammad, and Abdu Rasul. That you testify there is no doubt you whether you worship except Allah. And that you testify that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah is the first pillar. Giving a zakah and fast in the month of Ramadan and going and performing pilgrimage to the house of Allah if you are able to do so. Who can repeat the five pillars of Al Islam? شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله. يقول رسول. نعم. شهادة أسمع. نعم. So the first is شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله. طيب ما معنى شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله؟ So what is the meaning of شهادة لا إله إلا الله؟ What is the meaning of لا إله إلا الله؟ To worship Allah. To single out Allah in worship mm -hmm. and submitting yourself to His work. 
معنى شهادة لا إله إلا الله. The meaning of شهادة لا إله إلا الله. This testification is. ما معنى؟ نعم. لا معبود محق إلا لا معبود. لا معبود. بحق. نعم. لماذا نقول إن معنى لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق؟ So the brother said. That the meaning of La ilaha illallah is La ma'buda. There is no any other deity of worship, a god or any other deity worthy of worship, bihaq, in truth, illallah except Allah. The Shaykh said that why do we add this term in truth? Why do you say there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah? Why do we mention this word in truth? So is it right, for example, for us to take out this word in truth and we can just say there is nothing worship except Allah? Can we say this is correct? What is the difference between saying there is nothing which is worship except Allah and between saying there is nothing which is worship in truth except Allah? What's the difference between these two statements? Now, uh, you, you might have doubt. There's nothing, but you know, and first you, you're clear that you, you said there's nothing to worship, and you say like this, you mean you might have doubt. But you, you can fish again, call the title, can you help? Yeah. Because the other things that I worship, but this doesn't count as, um, it's not the same worship as Allah. You know, For example, I don't want to talk about that. Allah is فتح الله عنه. لأن الذي يقول لا معبود إلا الله هذا معناه أنه يقول كل ما عبد من دون الله فعبادته صحيحة. Because if you would say that nothing or if you would say that there is nothing worshipped except Allah, then it's as if you are saying that everything which is worshipped is Allah. Because like the brother mentioned, there are other things, there are other false gods that are worshipped. So if you say that nothing is worshipped except Allah, that means that anything which is worshipped, it is Allah and it is correct. So it's not like saying that the one who worships an idol, he's worshipping Allah. The one who worships the tree, worships Allah. The one who worships the sun, is worshipping Allah. هذا معناه أنه يقول أن كل ما عبد من دون الله عبادة باطلة والمستحق للعبادة هو الله هذا هو التوحيد. But when you add this word بحق in truth when you say there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah then what you're actually saying is that anything which is worshipped besides Allah is عبادة باطلة it's a false type of worship and the only one who is truly deserving to be worshipped is Allah. And this is the essence of the meaning of a tawheed So therefore, what is the reality of the essence of a tawheed So the essence or the meaning or the core, core meaning of a tawheed is that number one, you single out Allah in all worship and at the same time you disbelieve and reject every other form of worship to anybody else besides Allah. And therefore the shahada, the testification has two pillars. And that you combine between affirming i.e. your worship of Allah and negating or disbelieving in worship of other than Allah. Both of these are pillars. So the negation is saying La ilaha. When we say La ilaha illallah, when we say La ilaha, that's negation. There's no nothing worship besides in truth. La ma'buda. Wal ithbaat illallah. And then affirmation illallah, except Allah. So we affirm true worship for Allah. In the labud fi la ilaha illallah, nafi an jamir al arbid min dun illah. So therefore, when we say La ilaha illallah, you have to negate everything which is worship along with Allah. And then by saying illallah, you affirm that worship is only for Allah and He is one who deserves to be worshipped. Another time. So 
So you have to know, without any doubt, that the meaning of La ilaha illallah or the term La ilaha illallah it contains two principles, two pillars, two important pillars. La ilaha nafiyan jami' ma'abid min dunillah, kufru bil ta'ud. First is La ilaha, meaning that you reject and you disbelieve in all of the false deities, the false gods, or everything which is worshipped instead of Allah, the first pillar. La ma'abuda bihaq. La ma'abuda bihaq. There is nothing truly worthy of worship in truth. إِلَّا اللَّهَ عَذَرَ الْحَنْثَانِ Accept Allah and this is the second pillar, accept Allah. مُثْبِتَ مِنْ عِبَادَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَ لَا شَرِكَ لَا That you affirm worship for Allah alone and He has no partners. إِذَا لَمْ تُثْبِتْ مَا أَثْبَتْنَا مِنْ الْرُكْنَيْنِ فَهَذَا لَيْسَ بِتَوْحِيدِ عند أهل السنة هذا ليس بتوحيد لأنه لو أثبت العبادة لله وَلَمْ يَكْفُرُ بِجَمِعْ مَعْبِدْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ هَذَا لَيْسَ مُوَحِدٍ So if when you say لا إله إلا الله If you don't understand or implement these both of these pillars then this is a tawheed according to أهل السنة So for the one who says that worship is for Allah is for Allah but he doesn't disbelieve and reject the false worship and the false gods and this is a tawheed You have to have both of these things نعم ما يعيد لي Okay, who can repeat now the meaning of La ilaha illallah? From now he's going to ask the people who don't raise their hands. The question is, what is the meaning of the testification? لا إله إلا الله. معناه. The meaning is. لا معبود بحق إلا الله. There is no deity of worth, deity of worship in truth, worthy of worship except Allah. لماذا نقول بحق ولا ولا نقول لا معبود إلا الله؟ يعني ما الفرق بين قول في معنى لا إله إلا الله؟ لا معبود إلا الله ولا معبود بحق إلا الله ما الفرق؟ The Sheikh is asking the next question: Why do we add this term bilhaq? What's the difference between saying there's nothing, everything which is worshipped, but there's nothing which is worshipped except Allah, and between saying that nothing is truly worthy of worshipping truth except Allah? What's the difference? No alfa. No. To state that any other false cause that are being worshipped is a falsehood. True worshippers. Yeah. So, like the brother mentioned, Farq uh, that you affirm that everything which is worshipped besides Allah is false, false and in vain. And worship is only for Allah. And if somebody says the meaning of La ilaha illallah is that there is nothing worshipped except Allah, and it's as if you're saying that everything is worship is Allah. And therefore there is worship besides Allah. ما هي حقيقة التوحيد? So what is the essence or the core meaning of a tawheed? ما هي حقيقة التوحيد? الآن ذكرنا فعلا. We just mentioned now. نعم. ما هي حقيقة التوحيد? What's the essence of a tawheed? We mentioned after this. ركنا الشهادة. The two pillars of الشهادة. هذا ركنا الشهادة وهي حقيقة التوحيد أي إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بالعبادة. لا أحد يعبد مع الله كائنا من كان. وعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا. نعم. So the Sheikh said that the two pillars are that number one, like mentioned previously, negating everything which is worship besides Allah. So nothing, whoever, whatever that being or deity or God is. Nothing is worthy of being worshipped except Allah. Like Allah said in the Quran, Allah, worship Allah. So he affirmed first, they said, Wala tushiku bi shay'ah. And do not ascribe partners to him in any of that worship. So even in this ayah, there's an affirmation, Allah, and then Wala tushiku bi shay'ah, two pillars. Okay, after this, we said that in the phrase La ilaha illallah we have to have these two pillars and nafi negation and al-ithbat affirmation. <laughs>
لا إله إلا في الجميع معبد من دون الله. When we said لا إله I am negating everything which we worship besides Allah. Al kufr bil taawut. So, for example, rejecting and disbelieving the false deities, the taawut. Illa Allah, except Allah, muthbith al ibad illa wahid al sharika. Is affirming worship for Allah. He is alone and he has no partners. Nah, هذا مهم جدا في معنى لا إله إلا الله. So this is very very important when it comes to the meaning of لا إله إلا الله. Nah, طيب ما معنى شهادة أن محمد عبد الرسول؟ So what is now the meaning of the testification and the Muhammad and Abdul Rasul that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a slave and the messenger of Allah? What is the meaning of this testimony? If a person came to you and said, "Do you bear witness that Muhammad is a fine messenger of Allah?" You say yes. ما معنى هذا الشهاب؟ And if he said to you, "Okay, what does this mean?" أشرح لي. Explain to me the meaning of this testimony that you're giving. ما نعرف. Who knows? والبقية لا يشهد أن محمد عبد الرسول. To the rest of you not testify. من شهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولم يشهد أن محمد عبد الرسول كافر كائنا من كان يهودي أو نصراني أو مجوسي أو غيره. He said that the one who bears witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah, but then doesn't bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, is a disbeliever. Even if it was a Jew who did this or a Christian, anybody who does this, if you don't also bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, كافر disbelief. يعني الآن لو كان عندنا رجل من أهل الكتاب. So now if a person from amongst the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, if one amongst them came to us, على ما كان عليه يعني هو على ما عليه موسى أو عيسى عليهم الصلاة والسلام. And let's say they came and he was on the same religion as Musa Isa. The Jew was upon the exact religion of Musa عليه السلام. Or the Christian came to us. And he's on the real, true, exact religion of Isa alayhi salam. يعني لم يغير شيء. Meaning he hasn't changed anything from their religion. آمن بنبوة عيسى أو موسى عليه الصلاة. He believes in the prophethood of Isa or Musa alayhi salam. نعم. هل هو مسلم ولا كافر؟ Is he a Muslim or is he a kafir? من يعرف؟ Who knows? في عنده. من يعرف يا أخي عصمة؟ نعم. Yes. هو على مثل ما كان عليه موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام. Even though he's upon the way of Musa عليه السلام, even though he's upon the exact religion of Musa عليه السلام. نعم من يخالف هذا? Is there anybody who disagrees with him? يخالفه؟ هو يقول هذا كافر. في أحد يقول إن هذا مسلم. Who disagrees with the brother and says that this person be a Muslim? طيب. نعم كافر ولا شك في كفره. There's no doubt he's a disbeliever. ما الدليل? What's the evidence? ما الدليل؟ إذا قلنا ما الدليل؟ تقول قال الله قال رسول عليه الصلاة والسلام. So when I say what is the evidence, you have to say either Allah said or the Prophet said. نعم. ما الدليل؟ What's the evidence for what you have said? نعم. تفضل. سورة العلي إمام من الله says the the only deen with Allah is Islam. نعم. الدليل الشاهد في الآية. اقرأها. I don't know the ayah. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي لَا يَسْمَعْ بِي يَهُودِي وَلَا نَصْرَانِي ثُمَّ لَا يُؤْمِنْ بِي إِلَّا كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that I take an oath or I vow or I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is that nobody hears of me whether he's a Jew or a Christian and then he doesn't believe in me except that he's from the people of hell, of fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, نسخ كل شريعة كانت قبل. خذ موضع الشاهد قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر لا يؤمنون. So من حكم عليهم؟ الله سبحانه وتعالى حكم عليهم أن الدين الذي كانوا عليه عندما بعث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هو دين منسوب. So the Sheikh mentioned the the ayah that fight those people who do not believe in Allah. And in the last day, what? 
قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الاخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله. And at the same time they don't make haram, they don't make permissible, impermissible that which Allah and His Messenger made impermissible. ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين قتلوا. And they do not ascribe to the correct religion, the true religion from the people of the book. So the meaning the Sheikh is saying, look, even the, Allah is talking about the people of the book here, the Jews and the Christians, upon the way of Musa and Isa alayhi salam. And yet he said that fight those people who do not believe in Allah on the last day, and they do not make haram that which Allah and his messenger made haram. So every single person to whom the call to the, of the messenger has been conveyed to him, and, and yet he does not believe in the Prophet then he is a disbeliever, whoever he is, then he is a disbeliever. A Jew or a Christian or a, 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 a Majus, fire worshiper. So therefore what is the meaning of Shahadat Anna Muhammad and Abdul Rasulullah? So we've already said that it's not, it's not enough for a person to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah and then he doesn't testify to the Prophet sallallahu It's not enough for, for being a Muslim. What is the meaning of the second testimony? But the rest of you, you don't say this testimony? No. No. Believe in everything that you came with. And to be equally my jabi. To believe everything they came with. Ta'atu fi ma'ama. The definition definition is Ta'atu fi ma'ama. Hala muqtama shahadat anna Muhammad al Abdul Rasul. Being obedient to to him in everything which he ordered. This is the this is what the shahada includes or compromise of. Being obedient to the Prophet in everything which he has ordered. And the opposite of obedience is disobedience. For example, a person rejects the statements of the Prophet And the second thing is, so the first thing is Obeying the Prophet in everything which he ordered to do. The second thing is, is believing or uh, testifying to the truth of everything which he informed, which he said that is the truth. I, whatever, anything that the Prophet said, we say that he's the one who spoke the truth and he's the one upon whom the truth has been testified. So, for example, the Prophet said that each one of you will be tested in his grave. We say Amanna, we have believed, believed, was Saddaqna, we hold it to be the truth, and therefore we are safe. Sallamna, we are we are safe now. <coughs> For example, the Prophet said that there will be a group of people. Or he said that during the end of time my Ummah will be split into various sects. What do you say? We say Amanna, we have believed, Saddaqna, this is the truth, and Salamna, and we, we submit ourselves. And then, the, and then the third meaning of Shahadat Anna Muhammad Rasulullah is staying away from everything or distancing yourself from everything which he has forbidden you from doing so. So here we said al ishtinab. We didn't say just leaving alone. The meaning of ishtinab is that you're so far away from dis disobeying the Prophet that you are on one side and whatever the person uh, orders not to do is on the other side. That's how far you are distant you are. Yeah. So, for example, the Prophet he forbade from a ship. So, what do you do? You totally avoid a ship. The Prophet he forbade from a riba, which is used to use interest based transactions, and also adultery. 
and other sins. And then the fourth thing in this, this definition that a person does not worship Allah except or except with what the Prophet came with, except with the way of the Prophet that which the Prophet legislated. Meaning, Meaning, that it's not possible for any act of worship to be accepted except through two conditions. Number one, sincerity. And number two, being in conformity to the guidance of the Prophet An example of this. This brother, this brother, he wants to pray dhuhr, five units of prayer. Is it correct or not? No shouting. You have to raise your hand. No shouting. Is it correct for him to pray dhuhr five units of prayer or not? Is it correct or not? Why is it not correct? Even though in his fifth rak'ah that he's saying it's wrong, he says Surah Al-Fatiha, he prostrates, he bows, he does everything which the Prophet did. So why is it not correct? Because the Prophet prescribed before. Subhanallah. Had you aqib Allah ala salah? If a person wants to say that look, will Allah ever punish a person who prays an extra prayer? Should we say to him, don't pray the fifth uh, unit? Or should we say, no, carry on, pray five, pray six, because Allah doesn't punish uh, an extra prayer? Does Allah ever punish over prayer? Will Allah punish him over praying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never punishes any form of prayer. But he will be punished for leaving the sunnah of the Prophet. And we say that you are an innovator in the religion of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish over the prayer. Because Allah doesn't punish over a prayer, but he will punish over contradicting the way of the Prophet. And this is the meaning of not worshipping Allah except in that which the Prophet did or he, he, the guidance of the Prophet. So therefore, that which is included in Shahadat and Muhammad Rasulullah is four matters. Number one, obedience to uh, the Prophet in everything which he has ordered for us to do. And then, affirming or testifying to the truth of everything which he has informed. And then totally avoiding everything which the Prophet ﷺ prohibited or he forbade. And then fourthly, that you only worship Allah in the way which the Prophet ﷺ ordained and legislated to be done so. Who can repeat these four matters? And these four matters are that which are included in Shahadat Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Uh, so the four matters are number one, ta'atu fi mahamar. They show obedience to the Prophet in everything which he ordered you to do so. Secondly, tasdiquhu fi ma'akbar. That you affirm and you testify the truthfulness of everything which he has said, every information that he has given. <coughs> then the third thing is that you stay away from istinab. You stay away from and you totally avoid everything which he has forbidden or, or prohibited. And then finally, the fourth thing is that you only worship Allah in the way that the Prophet came with, the way that he legislated. And the meaning of 
Shahadatna Muhammad and Abdul Wal Surah, the meaning of it is La bud an tajma' lil Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bayna annahu abdul la yu'bad wa rasulun la yukathab alayhi salatu wassalam So the meaning of Shahadat anna Muhammad Rasulullah abduhu wa rasuluh is that you have to affirm two things for the Prophet Number one, he's a slave, abdun and number two, la yu'bad He's, in, he's a slave and he isn't worshipped. He's a slave himself and he's not worshipped. And number two, that he is Rasulullah, he's a messenger of Allah. Now, so, if a person, for example, came and he said that I believe that, the, that Muhammad is a slave, Abd, but I don't affirm that he's a prophet. Is this correct? Kufr, disbelief. But let's say if a person came and he said, I affirm that the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet and messenger, but I don't believe he's a slave. Like those people who like those people who direct to the Prophet some acts of worship or they attribute to the Prophet some aspects of Arbubiyya those type of people they haven't truly testified that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and his slave so therefore when you say this you have to testify to two things combine both of these things Number one, he is an abd, he is a slave, and <coughs> he has no aspects of worship for him. Now, okay. okay, what are the pillars of Al Islam? Repeat, what are the pillars of Al Islam? Bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. In truth. Al-Haq. True and truth. Um, and Muhammad is the slave and the messenger. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave and the messenger of Allah. Okay. <coughs> second. The salah. The salah. The second is iqam salah Establishing the prayer. Aysah. Which prayer? The prayer. The five oblique tree prayers. Salat. Al Fajr. The Fajr prayer, the Dhuhr prayer, Asr prayer, Maghrib prayer, and Isha. Establishing the five daily prayers. Aina to Where should these five daily prayers be prayed? Where? For the men in the masjid. Naam, ala rijal al balagin. The men who have reached the age of puberty, they have to, it's an obligation upon them to pray with the congregation. Okay, the one, the one who stays behind from the praying congregation and is from the adolescent men or the men who have reached the age of puberty. Without any valid religious excuse. What did the Salaf say about these people? That the Salaf, they used to say that nobody stays away from the congregation prayer except he's a munafiq, a hypocrite, dahr nifaq, and his hypocrisy is clear, apparent. So therefore, what is the ruling of the prayer in congregation for the men who have reached the age of puberty. What is the ruling of this? Now, it's an obligation, obligatory. Now, he said, rather, some of the scholars, such as Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, they consider that. From some, of, from some of the scholars, such as Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, they were of the opinion, they considered that if a man was reached the age of puberty, if he prays a prayer from amongst the five daily prayers in his home, then his prayer is not accepted. And yes, it's not accepted, it's invalid. 
ما حكم أن يترك الصلاة بالكلية لا يصلي. Obviously, that's without a valid excuse. Now the Sheikh is asking that what is the ruling of a person who doesn't pray? He leaves it alone the prayer. لا يصلي. He only abandons the prayer. Like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, al ahdu bainna wa bainahum. That the difference or the core difference between us and them, i.e. the mushrikeen, is as-salah, the prayer. Whomsoever leaves it to abandon this has left Islam or has disbelieved Islam. Now, by the salat al-mahmoola khams. Okay, we said the five daily prayers. Fatih Allah alayhi. Ameen. Qul Ameen. 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 Fine. ما هي السنة الرواتب؟ What are the recommended prayers, the سنة الرواتب, the ones that are recommended specifically? السنة الرواتب يعني سنة ليست بواجبة من السنة راتبة يعني مرتبة مع الفرائض. So the meaning of the سنة الرواتب are those prayers which are not obligatory, so they're voluntary. However, they're in sequence or they're attached to the prayers. I'm not clear. I'm sorry, sir. Do the rest of you not pray Sunnah al Rawatib? SubhanAllah. So it's the Shaykh asking, what are the Sunnah al Rawatib? What are these Rawatib Sunnah? How many are they? Come. How many? How many? Yeah, all of them. How many units? How many units? Before Fajr, meaning between the Adhan and the Iqam of Fajr. Two before Dhuhr. Two Rakatain Qabla Dhuhr. Two before the Dhuhr prayer. Or four before Dhuhr. Or four units of prayer before Dhuhr. Four after Dhuhr. Four after Dhuhr. Four after Dhuhr. After the Dhuhr, two. Al Asr. Asr prayer. ليس له سنة راتبة. فذا أسر في ذي جناس سنة راتبة. لكن يصح أن يصلي قبل العصر، لكن ليس له سنة راتبة. زين. There's no سنة راتبة like a specific سنة which is attached to the أسر في، but it's permissible for somebody to pray something. نعم. المغرب. ركعتين بعد المغرب. Two units after the Maghrib. والعشاء. ركعتين بعد العشاء. Two units of prayer after the Isha. فتح الله عليك. طيب. ركعتان الفجر اختصت بأشياء دون بقية السنة الرائعة. Okay, the two units of prayer before the Fajr prayer it's got some special characteristics which the other sunnahs don't have, which the other prayers don't have. من يعرفها؟ Who knows them? نعم. الأول the Prophet never left out even when he was traveling. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he never ever left alone these two units of prayer before Fajr, whether he was resident or whether he was traveling. I Meaning these units of prayer never left alone. First thing. Asan. Now. 